Hello and welcome to Casting Rolls. We're a bunch of theater nerds who play Dungeons and Dragons. Thank you for joining us for the very first episode of Terminus, our short campaign uh, into a different world than we've been exploring uh, before we jump into campaign two. If you're liking the show, please don't forget to like, follow and subscribe. If you want to find us on social media, we're on Twitter at Casting Rolls and on Facebook, Instagram and TikTok at Casting Rolls ILM. Our videos are uploaded on YouTube every Friday, but let's go ahead and start the show. Twelve seconds. Two actions. From the moment the breaching charges explode in a blinding pulse of purplish magic, first expanding to encompass the space of the large steel and mahogany doors guarding Vecna's top floor penthouse, and then in a black hole rush of energy collapse in on itself, leaving a gaping hole in the wall, the clock inexorably begins its secondhand march towards the end. Twelve. The door implodes and immediately you hear the shouting of casting of two cult leaders as they release a held spell. Their mandibles replace metallic ones to mimic the mechanical perfection of their leader, clacking together in an arcane blast of energy. Who in this group would have been standing near the doors ready to charge in? Certainly not me. Um, <laughs> um, I would have been second in line. So it'd be definitely Kavuli and Ronin. And Sarah G and uh, Danny in the back. Okay, cool. So mm -hmm. Kavuli and Ronan, I need you to make dexterity saving throws. Oh boy. Two of them, actually. Okay. I've got something that says, like, spellcasters that make me do decks, sir. Is that your amazing uh, armor? I had a 23 to 17. Uh, okay, both of those are successes. Ooh, I didn't do well on that one. I got an eight and a uh, 24, natural 20. Okay, so the first one is a success for you, Kavuli, but the second one is, or sorry, the first one's a failure, the second one's a success. So Ronan, you, you take 25 points of fire damage. Kavuli, you take um, uh, 33 points of fire damage as two fireballs explode at the entrance of the doorway. You were told that Vecna would not see you coming, that he would not expect your arrival, but it seems that he is quite prepared for you. Uh, I need everyone to roll initiative. Dun, dun, dun. As that clock that you cannot see but mm. feel the pressure of uh, strikes 11, strikes uh, Kavul, uh, Kiv and Danny are up. Um, so what would you all like to do? Uh, you're looking into a penthouse apartment. It is beautifully furnished. Uh, there's a large open area here. Uh, the entire back wall is a three story glass uh, wall that overlooks the shining neon metropolis of Terminus. Uh, there's a massive staircase that goes up towards where you assume like the master bedrooms and suites are. Uh, but all of the furniture in this space has been moved aside. And at the back right in front of the glass walls, you see that they have built a dais upon which Vecna uh, in his metallic body form is currently floating over glowing runes. Uh, the two spellcasters who attacked you are standing to either side of him on the platform and you see two hulking whisper core mining bots um, that were are now repurposed here as guardian behemoths standing between you and Vecna and the cultists. Um, so Kavuli and Danny, what would you like to do? Um, can I say that my echo is has already joined us in sure. this yep. situation? Anything you and... would have cast or sp uh, prepared to do that. So if you had mage armor or anything like that, you would have already casted those to be prepared for this. So your echo is out and ready to go. Uh, I want to send my echo forward after the fireball hit as a precaution. Um, send my echo in first. Okay. Um, uh, the mining bots are about 30 feet away from you, so you can get within range of those in this round. All right. I'm going to 
try to make sure I got my everything in order. Yeah, I want to try to make an attack on them now. Okay. Um, so okay. from your echo, you're making um, your attacks, and you have, I think, three attacks at this level. Yeah. Uh, it's 27 to hit. That hits. That's a 28 to hit. That hits. And that's a another 28 to hit. But all three of those hit. You can roll damage. Nice. So. 66 so and 3d8. Mm-hmm. 66, 3d8. I got 34 damage. Plus 18. Plus so 18, right? 50. No. 54, 50, no, 52 damage. Uh, 52 points of damage as uh, the Echo Knight with its uh, laser sword slashes out and uh, hits this creature, uh, carving, uh, melting the metal of the metallic behemoth in front of you in these sparks of light uh, that flash. Uh, and uh, where does Kiv, uh, Kiv run um, as his Echo is charging forward into battle? I'll come in um, behind it, but I want to be sort of askew, so kind of like maybe on a diagonal, okay, like mm, fifteen feet away. Sure, sounds good. All right, Danny, what's up? Our mission's like going in, right? Yeah, your right your now, mission like... is to shut down Vecna's rituals so he cannot become a god. Sure, I'm just focused on the magic users then. Sounds good. Okay. What is it with us and people what wanting to become gods? What's it with D and D and people <laughs> wanting to become gods? <laughs> so true. I'll cast like fifth level shatter. On okay, them. cool. Um, so that shatter. is a Constitution saving throw. You'll get Vecna and mm-hmm. one of the spellcasters. Yeah, that works. Um, failure yep. on the first spellcaster. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vecna, that is... Um, I think that's going to fail. That's a 15. Mm-hmm. Yep, he will fails. choose to succeed and okay. burn a legendary resistance. Okay. Well, I only rolled uh, 19 damage, so not great, but we out there. Yeah, Rob. Um, uh, since you said we could take actions before this happened... Um, yeah. Sarah will have hidden, and that's a 26 stealth roll. Sounds perfect. Um, all right. Um, so then, Danny, do you want to like stay back in the the doorway, um, or yeah, I'll, uh, if I still have movement, I'll like scoot back. Cool. In, or... All right. So you had to come forward about 15 feet so you could reach them, and then you popped back out 15 feet. Yes. Thank all you. right. Um, so then the clock hits nine. Uh, the two cyborg spellcasters point their arms out at the nearest members of the agency, uh, and one greenish yellow rune on their arms alight. Uh, it travels down to the tip of their finger, and they release a sickeningly green bolt of energy in Kavuli's direction. Uh, Kavuli, mm. I need you to roll a dexterity saving throw. Hope you hit this. 16. That is exactly what you needed to hit. (laughs) Um, So I believe that with this spell, a success means you take no damage. How close is the spellcaster to me? Um, About uh, 45 feet. Okay, never mind. Um... Yeah, so you take no damage as the um, the disintegrate spell that was coming in your direction um, just kind of you parry the beam away and it slams into the wall behind you, burning a hole in the side of Vecna's chamber. Um, the other spellcaster um, is going to point in the direction of our remaining crew. So Ronan, Danny and Sarah G, I need you to make dexterity saving throws as um, eight runes pop up around the the spellcaster's head and they spiral around and one beam of energy from each of those runes flies in your directions. Oof. What did it see me because of my 26 stealth? Oh, um, let's see. Not he does not. So, more. nope, that's perfectly fine. So uh, Ronan and just Ronan and Danny uh, make those What, what saves. is a 16 do? That is a success. <laughs> okay. Let's go, Danny. And I think I have advantage... That's a, uh, so I rolled an 11. Okay, so that is a failure. Um, mm-hmm. So you'll take half damage because it's a deck save. Um, so for uh, Danny, um, a beam of green energy flies in your direction and slams into you. You're able to shunt most of it aside with your magical sure. energy, uh, but you take um, 
20 points of poison damage. Right. Um, uh, Ronan, this blue beam of cold energy slams into you uh, and kind of frosts over uh, elements of your of your uh your white jacket uh, and uh, you take um, 36 points of cold damage, but have uh, so um, uh, was and it eight, can, I have, can I have that again if I use uncanny dodge? Um, so uncanny dodge is a reaction, a reaction to uh, an attack you can see. Yep, you can. So that'd be okay. nine points of um, cold damage to you after kind of casting these spells, trying to keep you away from their master, they turn back to their chanting around the runic system that Vecna is floating over, um, which takes us to the clock hitting eight. Um, Sarah G and Ronan, you're up. Uh, is there anything in the room cover wise? Cover wise? Yeah, so if you, so there's a slight um, kind of hallway entrance that's about 10 feet, and then the room opens up, and they've just kind of shoved all the furniture out of the center of the room. So there's like beautiful, like couches and chaise lounges, uh, bookshelves, and things that have just kind of been tossed to the side in preparation for this ceremony. So if you get into the room and kind of cut around to either side, uh, there's some cover on those areas. All right, I want to sprint in and cut around to the side and find debris on the side of the uh, one uh, caster who's been hit already by the shatter. Okay, cool. So you um, kind of cut off over to the left and try to duck mm -hmm. down and hide. Uh, or use your bonus action to hide. You can roll yes. a stealth check. Uh, okay. So 27. 27, okay. Um, you are hidden. Uh, you can take your attack with advantage. All right, so I will be doing that, and I am going to use a uh, arrow of walloping. Okay. So if th if they fail on a DC 10 strength check, um, they're knocked prone. Okay. Um, that is an 11, and they add nothing to it. So yeah, it's just straight 11. Okay. So roll into hit. 23 to hit. Hits. Nine damage, and now I roll sneak attack. Mm -hmm. 34 damage. Uh, <laughs> nine <laughs> plus 34. Um, all right, so, um, okay, so that um, caster is looking a little rough. Um, what about you, Sergi? A um, couple of questions. Uh, number one, do we think that, is it a reasonable expectation that taking out the guys doing the chanting will halt the um, halt the the ritual. Um, so the what you learned about the ritual is that Vecna was preparing it. Uh, he probably has them here as aids, which means they're probably increasing his ability to complete it faster. Um, so he would probably still be able to complete the ritual without them. It would just slow him down a little bit. OK, and and Vecna is basically um, machine yeah so the tr traditional vecna is like uh, has embraced undeath uh, and has become a lich on his path towards godhood um this vecna in this world has um is basically like ultron yeah um so uh would i have a reasonable expectation that necrotic would work on ultron or not um you don't think that it would um have an increased effect but it wouldn't have like he wouldn't have the same resistance that an undead creature would have Okay, um, I am going to sprint in or, or move to a position where I... How far away am I from Vecna and how far away am I from the damaged guy? Um, you're about 50 feet from the damaged guy and Vecna is about 60 feet away. Okay, uh, I will move my full 35 in. Okay. And I'm going to cast harm on Vecna. Uh, if you go 35, you'll be smack in the face of these two hulking guys. Um, if you uh, want to move off to the move. side. Perfect. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move part of the way there because I'm going to cast the spell and mm -hmm. then I'm going to do a bonus action. Sounds against good. One of them. Yep. Perfect. So um, uh, harm uh, that is um, 14 and, D6. And this is against Vecna. Yep. Oh, fuck. That's a lot of ones real uh i rolled four ones Ugh. 
out of the 14. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, DC is 20. 20. Um, he, that is, he burns another legendary resistance, so he'll take half damage. 34 damage. 34 points of damage? Okay, cool. Um, and which he'll take half of, so 17. Okay. And then she will uh, run up to one of the mechanical hulking guys who's in the way and bonus attack offhand. Okay. Uh, uh, she pulls out, out mm-hmm. her um, uh, baton and flicks it open, and you notice that it is glowing. Are you going for the one that Kiv already hit? Yeah. Cool. Uh, and so that is going to be baton I am not proficient in, ironically enough. So, no, I am proficient in. Sorry. 13 plus 7, dirty 20, uh, dirty 18, uh, 18, 18. 18 hits. Love so clerics. She hit this guy <laughs> with another ones and twos. Another bus bucket. <laughs> 19. Uh, 19 points of damage. Okay. Um, so kind of hitting in the areas where already damaged by Kiv's attack, um, weakening it down, you can see elements of its joints beginning to come apart. It's looking okay. um, like it's in a pretty rough space. Yeah. Um, uh, 2d6 and 48, and I did 19 damage. <laughs> That's so I have rolled like half. <laughs> Get it out of your system times. now. Get out of <laughs> your system in episode one. <laughs> Um, mm-hmm. All right, uh, the two uh, sci- the two bulwarks are going to make their attacks. Um, uh, the one that you just hit, Sarah, um, however, is going to attack Kiv, um, and so both of these attacks are coming at your um, your Echo Kiv, and then um, the other one is going to kind of move in in your direction, Sarah, and make two strikes in your way. Um, so Kiv, the first one, that's a that's thirty two to hit. No, 31 to hit. <laughs> um, the second one is a 24 to hit. Um, so I'll roll that damage in a second because I know both. Of the, do both those hit you, Kiv? Your echo? Yeah. Um, Sarah, the first attack. Oh, that's only a 17. Miss. Uh, and the second one, that's better. That's a 27. That hits. Okay. Um, so Kiv, the two attacks against your echo um, are... Um, well, I'm trying to see. I don't, I don't know if I have anything to like. 32 points of damage to the echo. Um, and then the one attack against you, um, Sarah, the attack. Oh, that's. There's my runs and twos for you uh, <laughs> on yours. Uh, that when is. round goes around, I suppose. Yeah, yeah that's 14 points of, of uh, bludgeoning damage to you as this massive um, creature that was designed to break down granite walls in mines as it was digging that through was the deep. elemental plane of Earth. Um, brings that mining implement down yeah, and, and kind of, you dodge out of the way a little bit. Uh, all right. And then. Um, the clock hits seven. Uh, turning from his dais, Vecna, the gleaming metallic body shunning any trace of the weakness of the flesh, activates the second ring of runes around him, etching uh, as liquid fire lifting him up in the shimmering heat into the air. As an electrical discharge of energy explodes around him, everybody in the room needs to make a constitution saving throw. The only person not in the room is Danny, so they do not have to make it. 19. And that's from Vecna himself. This is from uh, Vecna's activation of the rune. So the rune shoots off this electrical energy. Okay. Yeah, gotcha, it's the gotcha. power it is. Mm-hmm. Do we think Vecna's al- <laughs> immune to electrical? Probably <laughs> not. <laughs> okay. We'll see. Uh, 22. Uh, 22 is a success. Ronan Sergi. Uh, 19. 19 and a five, Ronan. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that is um, 20 points of damage to Ronan, 10 to Kiv and Sarah G. Ronan, your speed is reduced to zero uh, for this round uh, until the end of your next turn. As like the electricity kind of shoots across the metal floor and like binds you to the ground uh, from the attack. I'm getting an echo. Um, all right. Six. The clock hits six. We come back to Kiv and Danny. Jesus. I'm just going to swing at the guy. Okay. Three more attacks against the big guy. 
We'll try it out. All right, so my initial attack. You do have to call Great Weapon Master first, um, just so you it, you can't roll and then say I take Great Weapon Master. Okay, well, I'm not going to take Great Weapon Master on this one. Okay. Does a 14 okay. hit? 14 misses. Shit. Well, um, it wouldn't have mattered if I called Great Weapon or not. Um, I get, so it's the initial attack. Bonus action. Okay, can I call my... Um, Manifest Echo back because it only has one hit point. Okay. It's high AC, but very uh, low HP. 22 to hit. Uh, 22 hits. All right. And then I can reroll ones, ones and, twos. and twos. All right. So we'll keep. All right. I'll get rid of that one. So that's 10 damage. Roll a D6 in its place, maybe. Uh, okay. So that's. 14 damage plus a d8 two extra radiant for that one okay so 14 16 and then plus six. I get one more so that's uh 20 okay 13 to hit does not hit right it does not hit um but uh, all right but he's looking um more rough than he was before uh danny um, so the two look rough, and then Vecna is chilling, right? The, one of the spellcasters looks at rough, and one of the behemoths looks rough. Mm-hmm. Okay. Can I actually move my guy? This guy looks rough. Can I move my guy kind of closer to Vecna? Um, so you can skirt around him and put the him between you and uh, between Vecna and the behemoth, but Vecna would still be about 20 feet away. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, I'm going to activate my Mantle of Majesty, and that means I can cast Command as a bonus action, and then I'll cast Command on them. On one of the the one that's injured or the one that's not? Uh, the one that's not. And as a Charisma saving throw? It's Wisdom save. Wisdom 17. save. Uh, that is a 14. All right, I command them to flee. To flee. Okay, cool. Um, so when it comes around to their turn, uh, they will uh, run. Um, perfect. Perfect. Oh, wait, bonus that action. Uh, that, it doesn't cat count. Haha, <laughs> nice. Um, did it take, it was an action to activate it and then a bonus action to use it? Was that? Yeah, I think that's. But it's up for you to use later on. Cool. Yup, yep. And I don't take spell slots for a whole minute. All right. Um, all right. The clock then hits five um, um oh yeah go ahead I'm sorry i needed to roll um when i was hit whether no no i'm fine concentration okay. cool that's fine um the the clock hits five uh the two spellcasters uh one of them turns and runs off of the platform uh vecna ignoring this for a moment but the other one instead of turning and attacking you all uh, moves over to a node on one of the runes and the moment it stands there the electrical energy shooting around that room erupts up the um the spellcaster consuming all of the skin and muscle and bones yeah. leaving only the metallic components left uh, which clatter down to the ground as vecna sucks the life energy out of the spellcaster and into the rune and you see the rune glow brighter um but the other one is off of the off the rune uh for this round um four sarah and ronan uh, I run the west of the wet, the west of the ray to um, to Vecna. Okay. Uh, swing my bag around, pull out the two paddles, yo, clear and empty <laughs> the entire ten charges from my defibrillator into Vecna. Fantastic. Um, that's an attack roll. Um, yes. All right, that go ahead is, and make your attack that roll. Is a melee attack roll. Uh, that is a dirty. Uh, that is a twenty-one, rather. A twenty-one to hit. Um, yeah. Let's see. Is Vecna focused, or is he going to use his reaction to cast shield? Um, so he's uh, too focused on the spell right now and isn't paying attention to you doing that. Mm-hmm. Do I get sneak attack on this? Um, no. He, no. He is. Uh, he's still battle conscious and aware. He's just like isn't using the spell energy to protect himself with shield. It's some more ones and twos. And Jesus Christ. Sorry. You're good. 
These are all new characters. They are all new characters and new classes. No, yeah. and high level. I'm, I'm rolling like ass is the problem. Oh, well, that's fine. Uh, I rolled eight d8, and only two of them were above a five. Oh, thanks. So that's call an ambulance, but not for me. Five, <laughs> um, forty-one in uh, forty-one electrical. Uh, that, and it courses through the metallic body of Vecna, and you can see like parts of his joints popping and moving with the the surge of electrical energy. There, uh, he does take full damage from it, um, but he floats a little bit higher. Um, Ronan, your speed Fuck. is zero. Uh, uh, I still have oh, a bonus you, action. You have bonus yeah. action. Go ahead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hit him with my stick. Okay. Go ahead and make a bonus action off and attack. Oh, that's not going to, that's a 15. That's not going to hit. That'll miss. Yeah. But you're there ready to go. Um, Ronan. My speed is zero. Can I fix that in any way? Um, so you're kind of bound to the ground. Kind of like think about when somebody touches whatever current it is, where when you touch it, you're locked into it. Mm-hmm. And that's happened to you uh, with the ground. Okay. Um, I'm still behind this obstacle. Uh, yeah. Am I still hidden for Vecna, or did he shoot? He see me shoot at his assistant. You don't need to be hidden to get sneak attack because Sarah G is right on it. That's that's right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, okay. I don't know if Vecna is going to fail a strength ten DC ten saving throw, um, but I'm going to shoot him with a walloping arrow. Okay. Um, that's a nineteen on the dice. Yeah, that's what I thought was going to happen. So, he has high. He doesn't have high strength, but that was just a good roll. <laughs> Uh, 18 to hit. Uh, 18 hits and he will not shield because he's focused. All right. So six from the hand crossbow and then 26 sneak attack. Nice. Uh, 26 sneak attack. Nice. Good. Um, yeah. A good solid hit against Vecna. Um, um, I yeah. left off three damage because I forgot to add my divine strike. Sounds good. Okay, cool. Three extra damage there. All right. Um, then the clock hits one. Um, Vecna and Italic's arms reach up towards the gathering uh, and the, the energy has been coalescing around him and is kind of centered at a point above his head. Uh, and he reaches up and rips this energy wide uh, to allow a greater rush of energy into the room from some outer plane that he has managed to burst uh, into with this spell. Um, he has not completed the spell. He is not yet a god. But you all look up and see this swirling um, portal begin to open above your heads and you can feel yourselves being lifted off the ground as gravity reverses. And one by one, you feel yourself sucked into the portal that Vecna created and darkness follows. Memories begin to flood each of you as elements of your past, of your future, of alternate realities that you've never encountered before begin to fly past you in swirls as you're sucked to some time and place unknown to you. Kiv, you find yourself floating in an endless ocean of water, the calm seas lifting you up and then bobbing you into valleys between the waves. But when you open your eyes, you're not in the ocean. A greenish liquid glowing with magical arcane energy bubbles with runes emblazoned in their reflections floating around your body. You look out through the tank and see a team of scientists taking notes. You gasp, taking a rush of the liquid into your lungs, and you feel it burning, tearing the atoms of your body apart. And when you look to the left and right, you see an endless echo of yourself in identical tubes disappearing into the distance. You blink once. You cannot breathe. You blink again. Watch all the other versions of yourself blink in a line. You take a gulping breath, blink, and again, you're walking down the hallway of the agency. Rory Light striding next to you, the stern and scarred leader of the agency. It's the day of the assault on Vecna. She was minding you of the intel of the penthouse. Kiv, are you paying attention? You don't always take good notes in our meetings. Do you know what your role is in this uh, endeavor? I'm paying attention. I find things, I hit them. I got it. It's a little bit more complex than that. You're dealing with a high level arcane user here. Yeah, well, probably wrap the uh, other arcane guys around, right? 
Well, perhaps we had one that was supposed to be on the journey with you, and they uh, disappeared from their room last night, and we haven't seen them since. They can't take care of themselves, and maybe they shouldn't be on this mission. Well, get in, knock him out, shut it down. Hit him hard, hit him fast. I got it. <laughs> That's what we pay you for. Now, um, as she kind of guides you through the hallways, uh, you make your way towards the briefing chamber uh, where, you know, the, the final briefing of the current intel of the Vecna assault is going to be delivered to you. And she holds the door open for you to walk through, um, which is perhaps something that always annoys Kiv about Rory Light in that she always holds the door open for you and refuses mm -hmm. uh, in return. Um, do you walk through the door? Um, as you you step into the chamber, you find yourself flipping through the air, landing on all threes, uh, your light, your um, lit sword in your hand, uh, a hulking monstrosity of a metallic being in front of you, uh, two laser arms on the ceiling about to shoot blasts in your direction. What do you do? I teleport myself. 15 feet backwards to where my echo is to avoid the blast. Okay, these two blasts slam down into the ground in front of you, and where this hulking beast was going to bring you down its hands and slam into you, they hit nothing on the ground before you. And you hear the crackling radio sounds of the scientists in the chamber up above. Good, good. It seems that the time distortion is at the cellular level. Start thinking about ways that we can implement this in a more um, useful manner. <laughs> Good work, Kiv. You can take a rest now. And the two mechanical beings kind of collapse uh, as they power down. And you close your eyes for a moment and breathe as darkness washes over you, Danny. Mm -hmm. A stream of hearts and emojis floods across your vision as the numbers of concurrent viewers tick up. You're about to hit your personal daily record. What does your stream look like today? Um, it's very uh, like pastel e boy heart like setup, like very Harajuku Japan looking. Um, you can see like uh, his avatar, especially when he's streaming, is very like VTuber ish. Even if you look at Danny, like he looks like a filter on top of a person. Like it looks like a 2D thing or like a weird 3D, 2D thing. Um, so, uh, and he's got like, the, the little cat ears and everything. And um, he's he's doing that streamer thing where he's like, you know, like, it would be so cool if that happened today. No pressure, guys. But like, if you want to sub more, that's totally fine. Uh, go and give me a like, performance crazy. check for your, oh, uh, your stream. You want to see what this guy rolls on performance? He rolled like shit, but it's still an 18. An 18. Um, so there's uh, some more hearts and the numbers still tick up a little bit. Uh, but chat suddenly starts to send out requests. Dance, mm. sing us a song. <sighs> this is so boring today. Yeah, the vibes aren't here. Do something interesting. And the last command hits you with a force. You feel some mm. element of yourself being pulled away as the numbers begin to decline. How do you save this live? Um, there's like that, uh, like Danny has like stuff people have sent him to his P.O. box and he's like, do you want something interesting? <laughs> it's really interesting. And he starts like taking all these little figures and things they've gotten and he's like throwing them across the room. It's like, you know, people are like clipping this like streamer breakdown. You know, and he starts like, like tearing down his like LED lights in the background. So it's, it's a tactical not, breakdown. It's a tactical interesting. breakdown. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I think it's really interesting. But so, but the um, the clipping goes out and people yep. are clearly sharing this meltdown and you see the numbers climb, 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 and you feel that surge of energy pouring back into yourself just as you find yourself walking down the agency hallways. Um, Rory Light is standing there next to you. Um, you must be Danny, right? You look slightly different than you did in our online interview. Um... Yeah, you know, it's like, 
it's a lot to put that out all the time. So in the halls, I can just walk around, right? Well, um, we met your request and um, she throws out an object to you and it's this small drone that unfolds and flies in the air in front of your face and it's this beautifully designed mechanical drone with a large telephoto lens that can zoom in and out on you Uh, and it has um, as you requested small little cat ears (laughs) on the top of it um, as your familiar um, kind of flies around and begins to snap photos from all of your best angles um, and Roy said, I'm not quite sure why you felt the need to stream most of what you're doing, but if it gets attention on our business, then I think that that's not necessarily a bad idea. I can't blame you. Most normies don't understand. Normies. Um, mm. I need a translation service for all this new slang that you guys are adopting. Oh, yeah. It's like friends, you know. <laughs> well, um, we also have this for you. And she tosses the um, a a cell phone, uh, but one of the newer design models to you that is linked directly to your chat. Um, so um, <clears throat> you immediately see the moment it makes contact with you, the 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 messaging coming through from all of the offline users who are watching your old streams and things who are making comments uh, and the notifications are coming in. Some of them look fairly urgent um, that you may want to pay attention to. Mm-hmm. I am totally distracted by this. Um, and as so Rory's voice kind of drones out into nothing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then when yeah, you look scorch. up, you're standing in a darkened meeting hall. Um, there's a just massive, like three resolute desks, wide desks, standing in front of a glass wall that overlooks the neon city beyond uh, a terminus. There's a dark figure sitting in an enormous chair behind the desk. <sighs> so do you have the information that we discussed then? Of course I have the information. What do you take me for? Um, one of his butlers kind of a. Pre- a- appears with a uh, you can tell that he's a robotic version and he pulls something out to connect to your device um, and you slide the information over <clears throat> he retracts and walks back over to him it's quite impressive that you were able to get your hands on this what worker at whisper call was dumb enough to sell themselves up the river for this well sometimes people just need a little convincing you'd and be then, surprised and you blink for a moment and darkness hits you Sarah G, your vision clears and you're standing over a gurney. There's a man with a gunshot wound in his shoulder cursing. What the fuck? Stop the bleeding. You recognize him from the Neon Syndicate. He was dropped off at your door in an unnarked vehicle. He was unconscious, but now he's very much awake. The drugs hitting his system. What do you do? I'm going to to sit back and enjoy the ride. Trust me, this is going to be fun. You'll be fine. I'll take care of it. You're in good hands. And I start to um, use my healer kit to fix the wound. Fantastic. Make a medicine check for me, please. 29. 29. Okay, so you're able to stop the bleeding, um, and you can tell that the bullet round is still in there. Um, And you're with the medicine check, you are intensely aware that it was a magical round, that there's something in here that's timed that is going to go off if you can't... like stop it in some way before um but you don't know what the timing on it is dispel magic okay um so go ahead and make a um a, a check with your spell casting modifier uh, uh, if it's a third level spell or below it automatically ends it's if it's, it's a fourth level spell so your so dc is gonna be a 14 plus, so i need to roll a 14 mm-hmm. um and I roll a 14. 14, perfect. Um, so you dispel magic. I and rolled you, a 10 with the force. <laughs> nice. You, um, you release the magical energy into the wound and you just feel the um, what it was pulsing and building on this gun, uh, on this bullet wound uh, suddenly kind of ceases. And the man's uh, like focus and attention begins to nod. Like whatever that was, the pain of that was what was keeping him awake. And he crashes back out just as he was about to curse you (laughs) again for not uh, (laughs) providing him with more drugs or whatever. (laughs) I told you to enjoy the trip. Um, You know, I hope you have weird dreams, not bad dreams, but weird dreams. The ambulance pulls up and the doors open and your uh, fellow EMTs are there to help you lift him up out and get him into the hospital. Uh, As you jump out of the ambulance, 
you uh, step into a room that you only recently saw, um, a beautifully appointed uh, medical suite here. Uh, you kind of take a step back and look into the hallway and notice like your door two, day, two towards down uh, and Rory Light is standing in the middle of this newly renovated apartment complex where you've requested um, a medical thing here. And she says, well, your services came highly recommended. I hope they were worth this. Oh, I hope so, too. I don't want to disappoint you. But oh. I think I've got some valuable skills that can come in useful. Plus people I know. Oh, would you like I'm to look it over to make sure that we got all of your specifications in place? Oh, I trust you. Well, it's nice to uh, not be questioned. Uh, the team will need a medic. It's uh, going to be a dangerous excursion. You think you can handle that? Yes. Yes, I do. Fantastic. Well, let's go sign the paperwork then. And she opens the door back out and uh, escorts you in and you step into a conference room where you already see Kiv and Danny waiting and you blink for a moment um, and darkness washes back over us as Ronan. There's the sound of laughter and drinks clinking together and the faces around you are faces ready for action. You've been planning this night for months, and tonight is the night. You take a drink, um, your eyes come down, and uh, when you look back up towards the table, you're looking out of a van. Uh, there's rain pouring down against it, as rain often does on the neon streets of Terminus. Uh, and you can see one of your compatriots across the way kind of splicing into a terminal, uh, and the call finally comes up over it. You're up, Ronan. Uh, the gate is a 10 minute timer, so you've just got a minute to break through uh, and get us all in before the system resets. Uh, very well. Uh, I'll go take care of it. OK, cool. Uh, so you get out into the, the wet streets, your uh, your boots sloshing into uh, the the gutter wash uh, as you make your way over to this facility, which is not clearly marked as a gov as a uh, corporate agency, but, you know, is a, a shell distribution area for one of the corporate areas here. Uh, and he um, is holding kind of a cover over the, the port. Uh, you can make a roll to try to unlock the gate here. Uh, slide of hand. Slide of hand. Okay. Um, uh, 24. 24. Um, so you take your, um, your, your, basically like your breaker tools in and you start rewiring the security system here. Uh, and you're able to maneuver the wirings around just enough to splice in between the moment where the system resets so that the door opens and your compatriots have a minute to rush in and you as well behind them before the, the door slides closed back behind you. But you know you'll be able to open it up easier from the other side. And uh, as the door clinks behind you and you look up, you're sitting on the ground and there is a one of your friends uh, cradled in your arms. There's a horrible looking wound uh, on his like right shoulder near the neck area, blood pouring down his chest. And he's looking at Ronan. I, I didn't think that they would know what we would be here. Uh, it was supposed to be a co covert. It's, don't worry about that right now. What? What were you um, planning on doing next? I'm gonna make, I'm gonna keep him talking and try to make a medicine check to um, okay. make sure that he's all right. Go ahead and make a medicine check. And he says, um, we, were, we, we were just supposed to hack into the system and, and, and retrieve the information to pass on to the, uh, what was your medicine check? So I have uh, reliable talent. Mm -hmm. So, that's a 16. Um, you know enough to know that a man is spending his last words telling you how a plan failed. Mm -hmm. And he continues to talk through this. And for a moment, you just make sure the blood is clear. But you also know that the things that got him are coming to get you too, And you don't know whether the other members of your crew are able to escape or not. Does Ronan stay with his friend until he's gone, or does he leave and make sure that he's safe in the end? Um, I've got my hypospray kit with me, right? Yeah. Um, I'm going to give him a lethal dose of opiates. Okay. Uh, and I will stay with him until he's gone, but it will hopefully be less time than it takes for the enemies to get there. Fantastic. Um, 
he peacefully passes into a sleep and then stops breathing. And just as distant in this kind of warehouse space, you hear the sounds of bootsteps approaching. You're able to rush away back out the door. And as you open it, this small figure, uh, this shadow bursting with energy, chases across the room and tackles into you, hugging you around your waist. <laughs> Daddy, you said you were supposed to be here at three, but it's almost five. Why are you late, Dad? I, I know, I, I know. Something came up. I'm very sorry. I'm and it, very, very sorry. And Endora is laughing and giving you the biggest hug ever. Uh, and then out of the back of the, the small seedy hotel room that you're meeting in, um, steps another shadow. Because you're late, we only have 10 minutes left for this. You have I, to be on time, Ronan. I, I know. Thank thank you. I'm sorry. I'm I'm so sorry. Daddy, do you want to see what they taught us at school? We learned how to manipulate um, the third dimension on our devices. I'm going to give her all of my attention okay. for the next amount of time. And you sit down with her for a moment and she walks you through all of the things. And as you blink for a moment in this moment with your daughter and Dora, um, you open your eyes and you hear you're late, Ronan. We were just about to begin the meeting, but glad you could join us as Rory Light opens the door to the conference room and you enter in to find Danny Cavulli and Sarah G there as well. But it's interesting. You all see as Ronan comes in. It's just like it was before the Vecna meeting, but that happened hours ago. You were in Vecna's room. You were there fighting him. You were perhaps succeeding in preventing his attempts, but instead you've been ripped back in time. The room looks the same. There's the beautiful mahogany table with the glassed coating, the large screens displaying the blueprints of Vecna's penthouse apartment, the reports that were brought in from spies who from the agency who had embedded within the Whisper Core. There's the beautiful windows overlooking. Wait, that's not Terminus that it's overlooking. You see a field of stars and galaxies spread out as far as you can see into a vast and unimaginable distance. You're in a conference room, but it doesn't look like you're in Terminus anymore. And we're going to take a five minute break right there. Ooh, crazy. Thank you, five. So cool. <laughs> Thank you, five. So cool. Cool. This I is fun. It. All the different personalities. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so Ronan has just walked into the chamber and the door closed behind you, except you all didn't see the door open. Ronan just appeared in the space, uh, just as uh, Kiv, you've seen Sarah and Danny do before you. Um, but now you're here in this space, still breathing heavy from the fight you were just in, still experiencing the pain of the attacks that you witnessed, but in a this very strange out of time experience. Um, what would you all like to do? I will say to the group, I am experiencing a most uncouth phenomenon at the moment. You think? I think uh, we're all experiencing uh, that. Uh, oh, is there a whiteboard in the room? Um, no, there's um, there's not a whiteboard, but there is like one of those large touch screens um, mm -hmm. that when they were going through the briefing with you, they were able to write on. So you know that you can write on those touch screens. Yeah, I, I'm going to go to the wall and I'm going to take out like one of my like a small knife from my doctor's bag and I'm going to make a small like etch in the wall like just a, a line in the wall okay you know if we're all having the same thing which is we were there and now we're here if we go through this again maybe we can do it right this time that's what I was thinking there seems to be some kind of spatial displacement occurring I'm going to go look out the window pensively. Okay. Um, so you look out the window. I I, can I do a perception check on Ronan? Yeah, sure. 
Uh, no, that's a two. Okay. Ronnie, you look <laughs> out the window and you see just like an endless sea of stars on like a purplish red backdrop. Um, you see galaxies spinning in the distance. You see large asteroids and meteors just floating calmly in space here. Um, but the thing that catches your attention the most is that relatively close compared to the vast distances of everything else. Um, <clears throat> there's some kind of very, very large structure uh, off probably maybe a mile or two away. It's difficult to tell um, that's gleaming in the light surrounding it. Uh, you can tell it may, it may be a collection of buildings on uh, an asteroid or it may be a city. It's difficult to tell, but you, you can see that out the window. <clears throat> Um, yeah, could I try to make a, like, what, what kind of check do you think I need to make to try to discern more from this? Um, <clears throat> so the history check would be your best bet. Okay. I'm going to try for a history check. Uh, 10. <clears throat> <laughs> it's really difficult to tell. Um, it doesn't ring any bells from your studies or training. I will and call the group's attention to it, though. Mm -hmm. Josh, my in investigation of the person, even with a two, is 14, by the way. OK, uh, what are you investigating? Um, the, the person who's not one of us that was at the adventure that the 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 Ronan. Oh, no, no. The... Rory Light is not present. She, OK, OK. Like in Sorry, all of your mm -hmm. that's uh, so you said Ronan. Yeah. So uh, Rory. Yeah, that, that's something you do immediately notice is that Rory Light, who's like the head of investigations at the agency, who is the one who interviewed you, each of each of you for this position, who guided you to this meeting chamber, who opened the doors for you uh, is not present here. OK, then never mind. Then that's that. that oh, that's, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Did you consider that <laughs> maybe he's already won and now we've fucked up big time? Unlikely, because he wasn't quite finished with the with the with the ritual. At least it didn't seem to be finished. Well, maybe something. I should have hit it with electricity because he's a robot person. Anyway, well, something's fucking happened outside this window. He true, could be, but he could be going through exactly what we're experiencing at the moment. Which means we need to assume that he may also be disoriented or disoriented, but also perhaps planning a way that he could have engaged better than we did. No, well, right maybe he now. already did. Because they were waiting for us and they weren't supposed to be waiting for us. Oh, I hate these like fucking hypothetical situations. This shit pisses me off. <clears throat> your phone you vibrates in your pocket, like Danny. Danny, Danny looks like so sweet and cute and adorable. And the way he's talking just sounds like fucking asshole. Your phone uh, vibrates yeah. in your pocket. I immediately go on my phone. I don't want to talk to these people. You, you go on your phone and um, the, the chat stream is still going. Um, you remember that immediately following the, the kind of overview of the day for your Vecna, you went live for like 30 minutes um, before you had to like go get in the car to head off to Vecna's. Uh, and the notification just popped up that you're going live in 30 minutes. Ah, huh. interesting. I tell the others about this. If we're going so, to assume that we're going to be back fighting Vecna in 30 minutes. What are we doing different? Josh, I'm going to type to my mod cat and I'm like, did you get that video deleted yet of me having that crazy breakdown? <laughs> the, uh, the message comes back. That out yet? I don't know if you want it deleted. It definitely hit 6 million views. May will you draft me an apology? You can use Chat GPT or something. Okay. I mean, I don't, Do it you be want? Sincere. Are you saying this out loud? Uh, I'm muttering. Yeah, I'm like talking to myself yeah. because I don't. I don't actually like to type on my phone. I just voice memo. Yeah, you voice memo. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're the one that had the breakdown. 
That was so fun. Oh, oh my God. So how many times have some, I've wanted to do that sort of thing? You know, throw things across the room, but of course, I'm, I'm, I'm not really going to do that. That was amazing. Oh my God, I can't believe you're you. you Perhaps like we could focus on a somewhat more pressing issue <laughs> at hand. No, I think this is pretty nice. It's, I'm finally getting some recognition here. Well, at least I know who you are now. You don't know who I am. Of course you wouldn't know who I am. I'm, I'm nobody. But anyway, um, so mm-hmm. yeah, what, what can you do different? Well, obviously getting the doors blown open and, and getting fireballed instantly is probably right out. So maybe we should try saving the explosives for use on Vecta. Uh, maybe. Hmm? Well, and we know that he uses those machines to eat those two spellcasters. Should we focus Just exclusively on Vecna this time, or should we focus exclusively on the spellcasters? I think we'll take out the big guy. Um, Josh, I'm going to try to plug into my intelligence and see if I can get a beat on if Vecna is in the same place. Um, at the exact same moment that you're trying to beat into this, a message comes from your mod that says, OK, so the aesthetics for the apology video are going to be a plain white room with a bad <laughs> angle. You're going to be sitting on a couch uh, with mm-hmm. very little makeup on um, and you need to no, look I'll like put a, I'll put a little bit of eyeliner on and I'll like smudge it a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. It needs nice. to look like you have cried, but are yeah, not crying at this together. moment. Um, we mm-hmm. are going with pure white on the walls, but we could go eggshell. That is entirely up to you. Uh, pure white's fine. We got to make the innocence factor really come But through. I think the angle of the video does need to appear as if you've just propped your phone up on a Coke bottle or something on a desk in yes. front of you. Okay. Works for me. Okay, we'll draft up a script and it'll come your way. Uh, at the same time, yeah, you're I see here this- it says it says ukulele. Let's just scratch that off. We're never doing that. That would be so dumb. Who would do an ukulele apology video? Um, I'm so sad Jace is here. <laughs> I think this is, okay. um, I mean, it works so well the last time. I don't know why you wouldn't want to go dated. that direction dated. again. It's dated. Can't okay, it cool. Uh, we could do a synthesizer if you wanted to do a song. Let's save that for apology. Uh, what is this? 10? 10. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, so you're trying to take a bead on where Vecna is. Um, mm-hmm. And you kind of focus on your magical essence and energy. That works really well. You're able to tap into the mechanical workings of the city of Terminus. You're able to tap into the net to project your image elsewhere to um, connect with chat at whatever level that chat is at that time. But that works because you're on the same network. Mm -hmm. You're no longer on the same network. What does that mean? I can't get a beat on where Vecna is. How were you able to do that before? You said I'm famous, right? I mean, it's like shit like that. Okay. But I I can't. Huh? I love your last three apologies. Thank you. I thought the last one where I like really started crying and had to cut it off early it was well timed yeah 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 I, I i think so and this one showing uh, not that i could help overhearing but showing mm-hmm. after you, the, the, the after cry that's good and and i think the pure Thank one you. because because that really upsets and see that's what i keep was, telling cat sarah I, I i will say this I, I don't think you should apologize too much because like i said we've all wanted to throw things so so giving into mm-hmm. a little bit of that if maybe you you know <clears throat> I, I don't know but um I, I think the popularity of the video is in part due because we've all wanted to, to do that and see that. So so don't don't think too far from it. Maybe I don't I'm know. Really I'm really gonna expert. no. I yeah. I'm really gonna take your opinion into account. Mm-hmm. Uh, just as as Daddy says that, you hear a pop behind you, Sarah, and like the plaiting of feet on the ground uh, in the conference room behind you. And you turn around and uh, Super Cat is sitting on the ground, like licking her paws. Here, you're not you're supposed to be at home, you naughty kitty. And I pick up Super Cat. OK, uh, for player purposes, Super Cat now has all of the uh, stats and abilities of a familiar. OK, Super Cat <clears throat> is a cat. Yeah. Oh, not... I'm allergic to those. Jesus. Oh, it's hypoallergenic because, well, you know, 
I had to do special dispensations to get her in my apartment. And we're not supposed to have pets. But, you know, I, I thought with the rats around that, that, that having a cat would be a good thing to help keep the place clean. Yeah, um, that's kind of sad. Anyway, what are we doing about fucking Vecna? He's not on this plane, and maybe I now. To, to, to Ronnie's character, and goes, well, you've been awfully silent throughout of this, and yeah. gosh, we've just been talking. I've been vomiting at the mouse. So what do you think? <laughs> I um, I'm probably not the best to figure out the logistics of tracking down the want to be God, but so when we do find him, we just uh, head right for him. We don't get distracted by the minions. I do think that's best. <laughs> But the question is, um, how Josh, do we find it? Have our spell slots reset from the last mm-hmm. encounter, or are they the same? It's very interesting. Um, you, when you appeared in the space, you felt the fatigue. You felt the injury on you. Mm-hmm. But all of your magical essence is as if you were never in that fight. When you nice. seriously check in with your bodies. Like you're not injured or hurt in any way. Um, You all basically have the effects of a long rest. Very good. Very good. Um, Well, shall we try to leave this? Is is an orange abbey, by the way. Long hair. Oh, cute. Danny doesn't think it's cute, but I think it's cute. (laughs) (laughs) And Supercat is short for Supercatafragilistic Expialidocious. Wow. Of it is. <laughs> it's, it's short. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. I'm proud of this one, guys. Mm-hmm. I, 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 Rob, I'm I obsessed was... with this character. Everything about them is wonderful. <laughs> um, well, shall we try to leave the room and see what... Yeah, Ronan is time? already Ronan. walking for, towards the door. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, not Ronnie, what's your character's okay. name again? Uh, Kiv. 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 Mm-hmm. Um. All right. So, Ronan, you go to the door uh, and you open it. And just as you're about to take a step into the hallway beyond, you know, like it's a traditional governmental building. So there's the conference rooms. And then right outside, there's usually desks and things in the hallway or or, or cubicles or whatever. Um, You go to step out and um, your foot is hanging over nothing. Uh, There is just empty space far as you can see below you and all in front of you and around you. uh, That sea of stars and galaxies now spread out beyond you outside the door. I close the door. (laughs) (laughs) And you said that. That there was a city or something in the distance? Uh, yeah, so once uh, Ronan opened the door, anybody who was able to look out the door, you caught sight of it. It's kind of like floating um, a mile or two. It's difficult to tell with no backdrop distance um, floating on like a hunk of rock um, up beyond this conference chamber that you find yourself in. I'm going to take out my hand crossbow. Okay. Um, cause I've, I'm, I'm decently well acquainted with like, of taking a shot over distance. Yeah. And I'm going to fire at the city and see how far the bolt goes. Okay. So you open the door back up uh, just go ahead and make an attack roll just to see how good your firing is. Okay. Uh, that's a 13, but I think I can boost that a little bit. Uh, 18. 18. Um, yeah. So as you you fire, uh, you all watch as the bolt kind of shoots out of the chamber. And the moment that it passes through the chamber, you can tell that the speed and energy of the bolt changes as if it's as the as if the laws of physics affecting that bolt are different inside this room than they are are outside. 
And uh, instead of kind of arcing as a shot normally would, uh, it just continues to travel in a straight line and you just watch it kind of disappear off into the distance and r somewhere probably from Ronan's perspective, based on counting the distance, probably 200 meters away, it strikes something that you can't see. And suddenly this like shockwave of energy goes from where it strikes and you can see a, a walkway made of energy uh, appears in space for a moment and then uh, ripples down and then vanishes from where the arrow stroke or struck it. That walkway, does it look like it leads right back to us? Yes. OK, so this is like a leap of faith, last crusade situation. Uh, yes. yeah. Gross. I'm going to um, read. I'm going to reach out with the foot and see if I touch. I grab, I grab you and pull you back. It's like, no, 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 no. We have somebody who's much better than this. Kev, you do that shadow thing. Can your shadow go out there or you go out there and then you bounce back to your shadow if you suddenly plummet to you like would be internally falling? Yeah, I can, uh, I can give it a shot. Yeah. And I will manifest my sh my uh, echo right in the doorway and okay. slowly walk myself out. So you walk yourself um, out instead of the shadow? Yes. OK, um, so your foot kind of goes out and the moment you step down, um, it's like one step below the doorway entrance, your foot hits uh, what appears to be nothing from a visual perspective. Um, but then the moment you step, uh, this energy wave shoots out and lights up and you can tell that you have probably a 10 foot wide pathway that's leaving for, leading from your door and is kind of curving up uh, towards where that city is. I look back like, oh, looks like it might be safe. I guess we have to follow the yellow brick road. And I the yellow out here. Okay. And actually, I let go of Matt, I let go of uh, of Ronan and let him go, and then I follow. Perfect. You coming, Danny? I'll let you all go first. <laughs> you look, and Danny has also picked up Super Cat if she's gone close enough. <laughs> All right. Um, so as you step out uh, into the space, um, you all kind of walking on this odd walkway that forms with each of your steps moving forward in front of you. Um, you walk for a few dozen yards or so. And when you turn around and look behind you, there is no conference room. Uh, there, that chamber that you left is vanished and gone, either now so distant from far away from you that you can no longer see it, or maybe it was never there at all. Um, but you continue to trod, and after about 10 or 15 minutes or so, uh, the pathway turns into staircases and they move up um, the side of this, what looks like it's an odd uh, half bowl shaped structure uh, that doesn't appear to be rock. Uh, it has fissures and breaks in it. Um, it has odd crevices and entrances, but then built within the bowl, you can tell that the city is here. Um, Sarah G and Ronan as medical practitioners, it looks oddly like the um, underside of a skull. A massive two mile wide skull. I start pointing out bits of anatomy to Sarah. Yeah, the orbital sockets and things <laughs> yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, and as you come up uh, the staircase and finally step foot onto the actual uh, streets of the city itself, which just kind of are built out to the edge of this structure and then just end. Um, Very still silver sign. Yeah. A, a city of unimaginable um, complexity and disregard for physics rises before you. Uh, there's buildings floating, lightly turning in the air. Uh, others are falling lower and deeper into the earth around you, only to rise again. Uh, one nearby building is like phasing in and out of ethereal space. Another is molding and convexing sure. in a Penrose triangle of a building that curves and then bends into a Mobius uh, shape, constantly convoluting and shifting. The windows reveal creatures sitting at tables eating dinner, dinner, unaware of all of the weird physics that are happening um, or that they're experiencing or undergoing. Um, and it's odd because you can see people inside of the buildings, um, but 
you don't see anyone on the city streets. Uh, and when you pass by windows, um, they don't seem to be aware or conscious of your presence here as well. Uh, but you move deeper into the city, kind of following the, the main path that winds through um, this odd structure. Uh, and off in the distance in the sky, you see uh, something that now that you can kind of see from this angle, a weird area of space where the stars and galaxies end, um, a, an enormous curving structure that seems to rise up out of nothing and then rise and disappear off into the distance as far as you can see away, blocking out all the stars in that direction. Um, from a scientific standpoint, one may think a massive, gigantic black hole, but there is no... Um, there's no disk of accretion energy around it. There's no, no event horizon. It, there's no event horizon or anything. It's just a space where there's no uh, the light of the stars seem to be blocked out. With a massive um, potential here to unlock some truth of where you are before you discover any more, I'll let all of you make a history check. Oh, uh, I roll it to say I did, but. <laughs> who has oh, a positive who has a positive number i'll help them me i have plus 10 okay i will help you thank you i rolled a 19 plus two i rolled the exact same thing a 19 plus two and i get a 17 okay so um 19 plus two so 21 21 won't mm. quite cut it um but it won't cut knowing what that space is in space. Um, but the description does of this realm does match what you have read about an extra outer planar area called the Astral Sea. Hmm. And I ask Supercat if 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 Supercat knows anything about it. No. Yeah. We can communicate telepathically. Yeah. Um. Supercat goes. Hmm. No, I don't think so. No, oh, I just thought this seemed like a cat dimension. Oh, that's a much scarier place for humans. Oh. Um, then I'm glad you're not there. Oh, yeah. no, I'm sorry, you're not there. It's it's a they don't feed you on a schedule there. Oh, that's horrific. Yeah. And why do you think I am in your apartment all the time? Because you're a good cat. Not all of us are. Super cat doesn't know where we are, but it's not the cat dimension. So we know that <laughs> if uh, if we walk past like a fountain or someplace just with some water, uh -huh. uh, I am going to try to scoop some up with a vial out of my medicine kit and save it. OK, you do pass by a fountain um, where the uh, the base of the fountain is floating in the air and the water is shooting down uh, like around and then falling back into a pool at the top. Um, so you can do that if you'd like. Yes. So you catch some of the, the vial of water and um, put it away. Absolutely. So you have a vial of water from this city, um, but you move deeper in following the pa the path. And it eventually rises. Um, you can tell that the city seems to be built in kind of like a like the way Paris streets shoot out from the Arc de Triomphe. You can tell that all of these city streets are aligning back towards the central radial structure. Uh, and it's something that's built up on a higher mound of whatever uh, ground this whole city is built on. And you, you rise up um, and it's like there are steps that you go up only to discover that you're going down them. Um, and then there's a moment where uh, Kiv is walking ahead of the group and you see him kind of disappear into a tunnel and then reappear walking upside down above you on another set of steps. Um, and then eventually you make your way through these weird um, physics breaking areas uh, until your feet step on a plateau, the whole city structure laid out uh, below you and in front of you is this massive cathedral, um, multi-tiered, endlessly complex. Um, there are many towers of different makes and models, stained glass windows, projection screens. It's like if every time and uh, 
design level were all mashed together into one enormous structure. Um, and it is kind of where the road eventually ends is at the entrance to this temple. Well, thank goodness we're here because we aren't going back. You know, if Bagna's trying to become a god, you know, having this temple to that seems to be died of all pantheons seems like a normal place you would end up. By the way, I'm very disappointed we didn't meet David Bowie. It was very labyrinthine. <laughs> but I've met you, so it's okay. And I smile at, at Danny. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad I'm on uh, the yeah, same I would, level. I would like to investigate the square that we're in. Okay. Um, go ahead and make an investigation check. Or the mm. building, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll help. Although my investigation is plus 12, so maybe you should. I rolled the same thing mm-hmm. twice, so 27. 27. Um, so the the kind of square structure here leading up to the building, uh, there is a beautiful mosaic on it. Um, and in the mosaic, you can see that if you had a more sky view of it, it would take better shape. But you can tell that it's a map. Um, there's like a mosaic structure of some kind that represents locations but it's difficult to tell like this is meant to be seen from a distance um like what that distance would be above the city and why people would be looking at it that way you don't know um but it does appear to have that uh the temple structure itself oh yeah go ahead sir um um, um danny did you can you have your drone take a picture fly up hmm? i guess so <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so Danny's pick Danny uh, drone flies up, up and the live feed comes down. Um, and what you're seeing is at the center, there is a um, a world with continents laid out on it. And then surrounding it are representations of fire and water and earth and air. And then around that further out are multiple depictions of other realms of all different types. Um, You've learned about this in school. It's not something that people in Terminus are super concerned about anymore, but you are looking at a map of the cosmos, of the cosmology Mm -hmm. of the universe. Um, And the world at the center is Terminus. The, The realms around it are the inner planes of fire and water and air and earth that the people of Terminus built the Dyson, uh, the distance sphere around in order to capture all of that energy of those inner planes and harvest those energies and also to keep out the meddling of the outer planes. Um, this depiction doesn't show the distance sphere. Um, so you assume that it was probably created long before the, the distance sphere was put into place, uh, which was over 500 years ago. Um, On the temple structure itself, the only thing that kind of stands out other than the odd architecture is over the main entranceway. Um, It does say um, and it doesn't matter what languages you speak because it says it in all languages at the same time uh, that this is um, the Cathedral of Light. Cathedral of Light. Do I have a better look at the skull that we saw? Um, like a different perspective or is it still the same so the city's kind of built to fill all the space of it so you okay. think that the reason you got a good vision of the skull was that you were coming up from beneath the city mm-hmm. and do i know where like let's say on a approximately uh, oh yeah I, I wanted to see if i could discern what species the skull was and also um where we are in relation to its uh, anatomy Oh, um, so you're you don't know about the species that's difficult to tell. It would have to be a species that has a skull that's over two miles large, which is not something that like rings any bells in your head. Um, but, but it's, it's, it's an actual skull, though. It's, it's an not actual like, skull. OK, yeah. I was going to say it's not like a, a construct, a construct that resembles a human. Nope, skull it's a construct. Like it's a it's an actual skull. And where the city seems to be built is like if you were to take a skull and just kind of cut off the top half, the city seems to be built in the bowl of the cranium and then kind of rising up above that. OK where the brain would normally sit in a skull. Yeah, and so the temple's right at the center? The, the temple's right at the center, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Um, but the temples there in front of you, um, you have this map here um, around you. If I'm looking at the feed with um, Danny, I would like to uh, try to see if I can discern some kind of pattern from it. Um, <clears throat> make a medicine check for me. Eight. <laughs> at, the doctor got an eight on medicine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't you have reliable talent? <laughs> oh, I do. I do. OK, so hang on. It's that was not very reliable, is it? What? So no. that would be 18. 18. Yeah, there you go. If it's a medicine check, I would have been helping. I would. Yeah, you would have helped. Yeah. Um, so the 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 map in front of the cathedral is like, OK, cool. That's a map of the outer planes. You've seen those in textbooks or whatever uh, of ancient history. Um, but the city is laid out. You can tell Speaking that the way the textbooks of ancient history. There's the map of the, the outer planes. There you go. The Ooh. theater planes. Yep. Um, hey. So um, the uh, the way the city streets are laid out at first doesn't seem to have any logical nature to it at all, which matches the fact that the city itself doesn't have any logical construction. Uh, but the more you look at it, the more you remember, like when you were in medical training and they would pull up neuron maps of the brain and they would like oh, pull away all the cell structure and it was just the map of the neurons firing that you can see that this city is like laid out like a brain mm -hmm. i'm sure i'm sure with the That's temple cool. at its center like where it all converges yeah mm -hmm. brain like within a medulla? skull believe we have to try to get inside okay you all move forward to the temple yeah okay yes. i believe yes. you're correct um so as you move forward um you walk across the square and you get to the center point of the mosaic where terminus uh sits uh and the moment you step on it uh this holographic projection appears at the entrance of the temple uh, and at first it's like folded in on itself but then it kind of rises up and stands and it's this probably 30 foot tall uh, female appearing uh, kind of android esque with large veils that float off um, of the corners of her dress uh, and she uh, kind of rises there uh, and she goes Hello. Hold on. Modulating voice matrix, making sure I am not speaking a language that you do not understand. You do speak the language we understand. Hello. And you're all hearing it in a language that you speak, but perhaps a different one. Um, and um, she says, welcome uh, to the Cathedral of Light of Lux Aeterna. I am the Maven of Tomes. You are the first visitors we've had here in over 500 years. Welcome. F 500 Thanks. years? I believe that that is the correct measurement of time for your location in normalcy. Time is such an interesting construct here in the Astral Sea. I'm using, of course, the terminal uh, measurement of time. That's why they have that old shitty map. Is something can, wrong about the map that we've constructed? No. I, I, can I make a history check with her saying 500? What what happened in Terminus 500 years ago? Yeah, this is something that is taught in. You don't even make a history check. It is something that okay. is like, it's kind of like when people talk about like, what's the turning point of world history? And they say the fall of the Roman Empire, right? Mm -hmm. um, and everybody knows that that's like, oh, in 400 and whatever AD. Um, 500 years ago, the the great mage Distin constructed the distant sphere and separated the inner planes from the outer planes. Okay, Which means so. that nobody from the inner planes has been able to trans uh, to to travel to the outer planes and nobody from the outer planes has been able to interact with anybody from the inner planes. Ah. Uh, so we likely first ones to leave terminus in five centuries the other conclusion that i must make is vecna may have been using the opportunity to escape rather than complete his ritual vecna running database check vecna 
a wizard. Mm-hmm. Partnered with Wizard Distin as his as his apprentice. Was Distin able to complete his work? He completed the sphere, yes. That would explain why we've not had visitors. Hmm. I have no Vec- recollection Vecna, of Vecna. Vecna was the apprentice, or Distin was the apprentice? Distin was the uh, the master. Vecna was his apprentice. Should explain like that, how Vecna would know how to pierce the distant sphere. Yes, yes, it would. Perhaps, but uh, all travelers beyond the, the the interior plane must first come to Luxiternia, and I do not believe that one by the name of Vecna has approached the city since. Oh. So he banished us. Out here first, because we were stocked up and he was still like doing his ritual thing, so we may have just preceded him here. I will also say that just as the time is a very odd measurement, um, time in the astral sea is also a strange measurement. Moments may pass here while years may pass in other places, or vice versa. Did you tell us Perhaps how much time has passed uh, on Terminus? Unfortunately, we are no longer able to read any of the comings and goings from uh, the inner planes. I think the humans uh, made perfect efforts to prevent that from happening. Maybe you should try again because, I mean, we just got here and we and you said somebody hasn't been here in 500 years. So maybe, you know, if there's a hole now that you can, you know, maybe it's just a pinprick, but maybe you can look through and see. Okay, I will try to access the database. And you see her kind of the the flowing light energy coming off of her kind of uh, flashes and then pulls back up and it goes into her eyes and they flash for a moment and then it quiets down. No, it seems that the hole has been closed behind you. However, distant and interesting information uh, for each of you. You are not of this place. Your spirits are not of this place. Mm-hmm. You are not tethered here. Correct. Where are you tethered to? I believe you were tethered to Terminus. The material yeah. plane. Yes. I do not believe so anymore. Ah. Uh-huh. So what happens if we're not tethered to anything? If oh, you are yeah. not tethered to the material plane, then you are not tethered to its rules. Time means nothing to you. Space means nothing to you. Quite interesting. Potentially dangerous. That may also explain how Supercat got here. Perhaps. Is Supercat special? But of course. He's a cat. Ah. What were you going to say, Ronnie? Uh, that's you said if we're not tethered to the material plane, then we're not tethered to anything. And What does that mean? But I guess you're just explaining time and Space doesn't really apply to us the same way. Yes. If you are untethered to any plane of existence, it can become very difficult to remain there for any period of time with your control. You may find yourself drifting in and out of time and space. However, there is a way to prevent the drifting, to retether yourself, as it were. Do you tell? Well, well, then you must find an anchor for each of you. Mm. What does the anchor How do we find, find an anchor that will work? Oh, the anchor would be unique to each of you, just as the tether is unique to each of you. Uh, let's see. I'm afraid I do not have any here to show you or to offer you, but I would imagine, and you can see she kind of looks at her wrist for a moment. There's no clock there or anything, but it's like <laughs> she's adopting the human form of checking time. We may only have a moment before your untethered nature takes hold. You might want to ask any final questions you have before you're unable to ask any further. We get home. Well, once you are once you completed a tether, then you should be able to return to the outer shell of the distant sphere and find a way through there. Does Vecna have any weaknesses you know of? Again, I do not know much more about Vecna beyond what he was 500 years ago, which was a subpar mage of a master <laughs> wizard. Well, that's something we How can How does use. one create a tether? Ah, uh, that's an so interesting question. Each of us. 
They would be interesting to each of you. It would be an object that you would need to find. And as she's saying this, um, Sarah, you notice for a moment, like you're looking at your hands and uh, you can see through them. Like Mm -hmm. transparent. And you look around at Danny and Ronan and Kiv and they are also transparent and the the voice coming from her trying to explain the inner workings of what a tether is and how they work other than it's an object that binds you to the flow of space and time um, begins to drone and be sucked into oblivion as you too are spaghettified into a thousand mm. pieces no. I need somebody to roll a d12 for me please oh I I, okay, go ahead. Okay. Okay. Ace. Mm-hmm. I got a four. A four. Um, perfect. Um, so as you are uh, rolling, uh, as you are uh, kind of feeling that energy, um, suddenly all of you like snap back into place and you are solid again, but you are underwater. Oh, no. Uh, and you begin yeah. to swim up and you breach through into a beautiful silver blue, pristine ocean. Uh, the, there's waves lightly lapping up onto a beautiful white sand beach before you and towering out of the beach, kind of rising up as far as you can see is a mountain of such beauty and perfection that you've never seen anything quite like it. Like no CGI could ever have created such a perfect example of a mountain. And there are gorgeous uh, vistas of trees spreading out on either side, small temples dotting the mountain rising up in front of you and the most gorgeous sun blue like you could never imagine a more perfect sun filter for a photo, Danny, than this sun uh, as you emerge into a new plane of existence, um, a beach before you. And you can see there's a, a tent on the beach. There's a small dock and there's probably a dozen or so individuals in white robes. All of them look kind of emaciated and drawn uh, that are standing around the tent. Um, but one of them kind of looks up and sees you and then kind of walks out to the edge of the dock. Oh, visitors, come, come closer, closer. You must get dry and out of the water before you get sucked back down. And that's where we'll pick up next week. Oh my gosh. Oh. I don't Amazing. like the fact that they're emaciated. They are yeah, no, I'm stuff. getting some Lotus Eaters Odyssey vibes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking cannibals. Cannibals, or something. cannibals? oh no. <laughs> Oh my goodness! You you roll because anytime you guys become untethered, you it uh, like it alternates what realm of Yay. existence you might pop to. So you had you roll for those, yeah. Fun, 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 fun. Yeah! Wow! Wow! Thanks, Josh. Oh. Jeez. Yes, I'm it's good to be it. back.